Good morning. May God bless you today, keep you. May he keep you from the evil one. Question. Where's the battlefield at? Where's the battlefield? Hmm? The battlefield's in the mind. You know, I read Joyce Myers's Battlefield of the Mind. And, uh, that's truly where the battlefield is. But how do you fight? Let's go to, we're gonna be kind of back and forth with things today. Today's word is we are called to be sober-minded. So what are you representing? What are you teaching others? Let's go to, uh, first let's go to John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. And our king states, the thief, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Where are where does the where does the enemy attack? Whether it's through control, doubt, lust, pride. Well, let's go to let's go to Galatians. Uh, remember that the thief, the thief, does not come except, except. This is the only thing he comes to do. To steal, kill, and destroy. And he comes and attacks us here. It's our choice to give in to the attack. I know. I've given in to that attack a bunch. <laughs> The fruits of the Spirit. Galatians. I didn't even write this down. Down. Thank you, God. Galatians. Chapter 5. <laughs> starting in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. That's the Spirit. Hmm. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. What is it to have a fleshly passion or desire? <laughs> These are the things that we need to, this is how we fight. Because in order to act something out that's worldly or spiritual, you have to first think it. You think it, Or the true source is what is in your heart. Because the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We know that this is our fleshly heart. Where is your spiritual heart? 
going on? Okay. So now, let's read the works of the flesh. And this is a way of thinking. Flesh. Way of thinking. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, decisions, and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in past time, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom. Can't stress this enough, man. I've been an alcoholic, drug addict <coughs> most of my life. But I know it creates separation. And I know it causes us to stumble and to fall into snares because we're not vigilant. <laughs> yeah. And why does it tell us in so many places to be sober? Oh, we could sit here and justify. Sit here and, oh, I can, I've never really had a problem with it. And, and then, you know, and I, I can control myself when I'm drinking. And, uh, yeah, you might be able to. go into some of these you know we're called to we're called to a higher calling <laughs> yeah we're called to a higher calling what is it to come out of this world and overcome it if we're still in it <laughs> ah man uh, Titus Two six. <laughs> Titus is a really good book. It's really short. But man, there's a lot of meat in it. So let's go, Titus. Two six. <laughs> and it states, likewise, exhort the young men to be sober minded. What's exhort mean? Doesn't that mean warn? Warn them. Warn. Influence. Influence the young men to be sober-minded. So if you're influencing anything other than that, I'd stop doing it because the word tells us right there. Influence. Exhort. Warn the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say about you. What's your influence on people? What should your influence be? Let's go to 1 Peter 5 8. James. <laughs> be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking in whom he may devour. <sighs> what does the enemy come to do? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he comes to do. How does he attack you? 
So if you're intoxicated, loose, say you didn't get drunk, say you didn't get really high, you just got what people like to call a, a buzz, loose. <laughs> oh, I know all about it. But there's people out here that are preaching and influencing the masses. And I don't have that many followers. I'd like to have more followers so that God could influence more people through me to be sober. To be sober-minded. To be vigilant. All the time. If you give, if you crack the door open at any point, you're influencing people in the wrong direction. Plain and simple. You know? Exhort the younger. Let's go into it. I think it's in a, it's back in Titus. Well, we just read it. You know, influence. Let's, let's go, uh, so here we see Titus 2 6 telling us to be sober. 1 Peter 5 8 telling us to be sober. Let's go 1 Peter 1 13. First Thessalonians five six. <laughs> Let's go first Thessalonians five six. Oh man. First Thessalonians five six. Come on, buddy. And it states, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Got a little one right there. Well, let us watch and be self controlled. So, does that mean one day a week, twice a month? No. It says, therefore, let us not sleep as others do. How do others sleep? Well, they're not on alert with their mind. Stay vigilant in your mind 24-7. If it fogs your mind, then you're not vigilant, man. You're apt to be taken advantage of, if you will, by the enemy because you're not all there. You know what I mean? You're loose. Okay. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober. Verse 8. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Boom. But let us who are of the day be sober. Putting on the breastplate of... Why does it say that? It mentions faith. And love. And then it goes down and mentions helmet. And as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Hope, faith, and love. Commitment. <laughs> there's no hope where there's no faith. Faith brings about hope. 
It's going to be a long video. <laughs> I don't know if it'll post or not. <coughs> Who do you represent? The God of this world or the God of the universe? Your creator. Elohim. El Shaddai. El Roi. I am that I am. Yeah. Or Lucifer, Satan. Polyon, all that names of that. Ah. Who do you represent? And what kind of influence are you having on people? Even if it's one day a week, twice a year. Who's around you when you're intoxicated that twice a year? Might have been somebody that needed to see you sober. I'm just saying, man. You know, I don't go out and party anymore. Most partying I do is we had a birthday here yesterday for my 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 wife's six year old, <laughs> and. Uh, there was no alcohol here. There was no drugs here. There was nobody intoxicated here. Not here. There were some people here that didn't want to be here because there wasn't no alcohol here, but they were still here. And I respect that. And all I could do is be that light, be that influence. See? We don't drink over here. We don't drug over here. This house. Over here, we serve the most high. You guys, be blessed today. God over everything. Jesus is my king. Bye.